welcome back everyone, it's me Matsumus. Sorry I sound like I've been punched right in the face, I deserve it, it's because I have a cold. Uh, today we are talking about the beautiful HMS Queen Elizabeth, bless her golden heart. She is sailing the seven seas, as you can see the beautiful F-35 about to land on the flight deck. Folks, this is not news to you, I'm sure many of you are aware that the two beautiful ships, HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales are sailing the seven seas already, uh, doing their thing. They are beautiful ships, billion pound ships that are changing the way the Royal Navy thinks and does things and it is about time to. The UK has not had its flight group for, you know, carrier based operations for quite some time and I can safely say that I'm extremely proud to know that the Royal Navy has been given a key attribute that they've been missing for quite some time their carrier fleet group and it just it really is a very touching moment to see aircraft landing on these flight decks and doing what they've been designed to do the f-35 put it aside you know a lot of you have your discrepancies between you know the fighter jet itself and the program etc etc also a lot of you get very triggered by the uh, the jump ramp that's at the front of the aircraft carry here you know they don't just design things because they think it's the cheapest or easiest way. There's reasons to the way that they do things. A lot of people, and I find it quite interesting that Americans speak to of the, you know, the catapult launch system. And, you know, honestly, I, I understand where you guys are coming from, that you like the catapult launch system. But this isn't that time. It's We've changed. This is a STOVL, or Stovall aircraft. Uh, it doesn't require a catapult launch, launch system. It is quite capable of launching them with the uh, the flight deck in this configuration. So, you know, I, I know I trigger a lot of people when I talk about H HMS Queen Elizabeth and a lot of people say, Oh, Matt, it's got a ramp on it. It's useless. It's just like the Russian aircraft carrier. It's useless. You don't need ramps. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure you don't know everything about carrier design. I think the UK has made a pretty wise decision in when they design something like this. Uh, you know, this aircraft carrier is very unique to the British Royal Navy. It does have its two islands. It has a lot of technical advances that the older aircraft carriers, such as HMS Ark Royal, God bless her heart, um, did not have. And we really are into the modern age of 50 years more of aircraft carrier uh, service for the UK Royal Navy. And the British Royal Navy really is going to be very proud to operate these ships. I actually know of a couple of people who have... Um, served on HMS Ark Royal and it actually brought a tear to their eye uh, when I spoke to them about it and you know seeing these aircraft finally being launched off the flight decks it's a very proud moment now the UK Royal Navy intends to get its largest and most advanced warships ever built to be considered to be interchangeable with the US Navy carriers and that's what the top admiral is saying recently HMS Queen Elizabeth or R08 is indicative of both Great Britain's return to the carrier based fixed wing flight operations after a decades of absence and the strength of its cross Atlantic partnership with the US. The first sea lord and the UK chief of naval staff have basically said that they want to address the ability for the aircraft carrier to be interchangeable and interworkable with other navies around the world and obviously specifically the United States. As she has pretty much demonstrated already, they can successfully field a combined US and UK carrier strike group. Currently, HMS Queen Elizabeth is protected by her own guard ship. However, they want to be able to have this ship work along the same battle group as the US at any one time. They're looking forward to developing this a lot further, of course. The aircraft on board, the aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales will be the beautiful F-35, which the US are also very accustomed to obviously they designed it and it makes complete sense but the partnership between the uk and the us and many other countries in board of this aircraft is pretty apparent hms queen elizabeth can deploy with up to 36 f-35 lightning two joint strike fighters and correction f-35 b lightning two and the ship is wrapping up a series of exercises off the atlantic coast right now in coordination with the us military the great thing about Queen Elizabeth right now is she is just about or all ready for operational deployment. She will embark on her first deployment in 2021. Its air wing will include a mix of Royal Navy F-35B fighters and F-35B fighters from the US. The Wake Island Avengers of Marine Fighter Attack Squadron VMFA-211. The combined deployment with the US Marine Corps fighters integrated into a UK carrier air wing signifies the degree to which two forces can operate with each other. Now you are more than welcome to go check out a previous video that I have created on the Queen Elizabeth carrier in the video above. However, the F-35B was basically the basis of design around HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales. 
The technological advantages and advances of the F-35B inspired much of the ship's design and automation. The aircraft carrier itself, though, has been under a little bit of scrutiny between certain media outlets about leaks, and that the aircraft carrier is leaking all the time. Although there are leaks on the aircraft carrier, it's pretty obvious when things like this are going through sea trials and being pushed to the limits, you're always going to come across some kind of engineering problem. It's a freaking moving city, almost, folks. Let's be totally honest here. It is a gigantic warship. There's going to be things that they need to iron out. I can guarantee you when HMS Ark Royal came to sea, she probably had her own problems. There's nothing that's going to go in the middle of the ocean and everything go absolutely perfect when you're talking about especially something as advanced and as intricate as something as this aircraft carrier today. Queen Elizabeth's core crew numbers around 800 officers and enlisted personnel. With an embarking air wing, the crew will probably double in size. The highly automated weapon system only requires about 40 crew members to operate, a fraction of the crew performing similar tasks on US aircraft carriers. However, the smaller crew size has not reduced the ship's readiness to ability to operate with the US forces. For much of the autumn this year, the Queen Elizabeth has conducted exercises with the help of the US Navy and the Marine Corps personnel. British F-35 fighters were sent to US bombing ranges with British anti-submarine helicopters to track US submarines. When Queen Elizabeth visited the US about a year ago, the purpose of the visit was to test how well the F-35B, a 5th generation fighter, worked with the 5th generation aircraft carrier. And this year, operations worked perfectly with joint operations. Which clearly tells us that the aircraft and the aircraft carrier is ready for action. Or almost ready for action. <laughs> of course, she still has a little bit of way to go with trials and development, but at the end of the day, the aircraft that has inspired these beautiful beasts to go to the sea are going to be launching off these flight decks in the very near future, going on actual operational deployments supporting ground forces, air forces, or naval forces around the world. And I have to say, as a British citizen and as a HM Forces or Her Majesty's Armed Forces service member of the British Army, I have a lot of respect for the Royal Navy in really saying, you know what, we're going to cut our losses, get rid of the old ships, piss off a lot of people, including the carrier flight wing and the fight wing for the carriers, because they got rid of them. There was no ifs or buts about it. They're not going to wait. They got rid of them. They said, we're not going to have them. And for 10 years, the Royal Navy has not had a carrier fighter wing. And now they're coming back into the action. It's almost like the UK is picking up its uh, towel again and saying, here we go, we're back in the fight, we're ready to go in a naval superpower. And if you don't have aircraft carriers in my eyes, you're not a naval superpower. You don't have that naval reach that obviously you can have with aircraft carriers that can strike air, land, sea from all over the globe. Um, you know, nuclear power and all that stuff, we'll put that aside. I know many of you in the comments section are screaming right now, so triggered that I've not talked about nuclear energy and the, you know, the... Uh, the launch ramp and all this stuff, but guys, okay, this is a good moment for the British forces. It's a good time for the Royal Navy. They are getting what they so long deserved for, a modern, updated carrier with a very highly sophisticated and capable fighter that can come off it. And not just a fighter, a stealth fighter that I know, again, stealth is one of those things that's going to trigger everybody, but a fighter that is basically a Harrier and an F-22 combined. It's basically like an F-22 and a Harrier jump jet had a baby together and the F-35 plopped out. That's what we're looking at. I'm just super stoked to see these aircraft flying off the flight deck, doing what we've designed them to do. You know, it says exactly what it says on the tin. Of course, we have a long way to go before we can say these things are working operationally effective, that they are 100% killing the missions every time and doing what it needs to do and on the point. But... I've got a really good, warm, fuzzy feeling that it's going to. You know, let's put the leak st stuff aside and all the other controversy and media outlet drama that they make about these ships. They are two beautiful flagship beasts of the seas, and it's nice to see that the Royal Navy is able to say, you know what, actually, we're, we're back in the game again. We're back and we're ready. Really, really cool. Um, so folks, I don't know what you think about this. I would love to hear it in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this this aircraft carrier and its, uh, and its sister ship coming in back to the waves and, and doing what she needs to do with those aircraft. 
Uh, I'd love to hear your opinion. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a like. Um, and if you really like the content that's coming out right now, you're more than welcome to subscribe. And if you want to be notified of upcoming videos, folks, and I'm trying my best not to pest you or flood you with videos, but please click that little bell button by the subscribe button so that you'll be notified of when a video comes out. Uh, for those of you who've been supporting me on Patreon, I cannot thank you enough. Thank you so, so much for doing so. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, you're more than welcome to follow me on Facebook, Twitter. I'm on Discord. Check the description box below. Everything is there. Um, and I appreciate you all being here today. Have a wonderful day. And once again, a big shout out and respect to the Royal Navy men and women serving in that armed force. I, uh, I really appreciate you. All the best. Bye-bye.